doubt. There's no doubt that we're gonna win. There's no split in the air, and we just, you know, just want to send a message. We left no doubt. We do leave no doubt when we're on the field. We left no doubt, you know, I think in uh, all the minds of everybody across the country that we are the number one team in America. Tim Ryan and welcome to Heritage Hall. You know, the 2004 National Championship really speaks for itself, but if you think about it, it was a unique and remarkable season. The USC Trojans were undefeated. That hasn't happened here in 32 years. They started the season number one. They finished the season number one. That's wire-to-wire -wire champions, and what that means, folks, is every Saturday, teams had their crosshairs on the big bullseye on that Cardinal and Gold jersey, and USC was still able to get it done. We knew we were stacked, and we knew that uh, we, we were bringing a lot of people back. And it was just up to us to stay focused and work hard. Um, Coach Carlisle preaches uh, downstairs in, in the training room first that it's all about finish. We're the best conditioned team in the country, and we're the smartest team in the country. <laughs> we don't make mistakes at the end. We don't make mistakes. We don't put ourselves in bad situations. We win every play, and we don't lose it at the end. That's what we're about. That's what USC is. That's why we're the best. Let's this school is a very special you know, thing we got going here at this school. You know, because uh, you know, even after we won the Rose Bowl and we were named you know, number one in the nation and national champs and all that, you know, everybody still wanted to come back and work for more. Everybody stayed hungry and you know, there was no one, no one person on the team that felt like you know we, we accomplished everything. You know, like everybody still wanted to come back and work hard and do it again. I like being the hunter. I like people having fear of me. I like being number one. And so, that's our legacy at USC. Fight on! Chosen! The Trojans faced a daunting challenge to open the 2004 season. That was a great challenge for us. It was a great opener that, and one that we needed. You know, I looked at that game uh, at this, when I was looking at the schedule as the game that would most fit the matchup that we may be able to find if we got to the Orange Bowl at, at the end of the year. Uh, going across country, you know, different weather situation, huge crowd, all of that stuff, a lot of hype. It was like a bowl game going in. It had to be at least 80% of their fans were Virginia Tech fans. So we were, we were really in there, you know, with, with by ourselves and, and with the little things that we did have. And, uh, you know, like I said, we played in a hostile environment. Hey, all the energy that we need is in this room right here. Feed off of one another. Trojan Brothers been coming together for a long time, fellas. We get a chance to go out to showtime. Let's make sure everybody just plays their ass off and we support one another the whole time. Great effort, great enthusiasm, play smarter. And let's have ourselves a ball. Come let's, on, go, let's, let's go! go. Let's, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Trojans on three! Oh, my bad. You, got you got it! Trojans on three! One, two, three! Trojans! Let's do that! Over 91,000 spectators were on hand to watch the opening game of the college football season. The Trojans made the game's first big play. Randall drops the throw, looks over the middle, it is batted up in the air, it's up to Michael Cooper. 20 yard line, after the 30, he's at the 35, looking for a block to the 40, still on his feet to the 50 yard line, into Virginia Tech territory. Then the nation was introduced to Reggie Bush. Little flip behind as a screen. That push out no end land. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown USC. Little screen over the middle. Had nothing but blockers in front of him. And the Trojans are on the board on a screen pass to Reggie Bush. But the USC offense became stagnant in the second quarter. The Hokies put together two scoring drives. And the Trojans found themselves trailing 10 to 7 at the half. This half is all about us sitting in this room right now to go get and make something happen. Everybody just play. Do your stuff. Do your stuff. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Let's go, fellas. They got for us. They know we're a second half team. They're scared, baby. They're scared. They know we're going to play in the second half. I want you to get your energy going. I want to get it going. I want you to believe one another. I want you to do stuff. Do stuff. Let's go, baby. 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 Let's go
provided a spark. Drops the pass again. Looking long. Has a man open, but he can catch up. And when he does, Reggie Bush at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, USC. Bat liner for Reggie Bush for the second time tonight. And the Trojans take the lead. Bush's 53-yard touchdown catch put SC up 14-10. After a hokey field goal, Leinert and Bush connected for a third time. Long throw. Look at Bush. He's wide open. Touchdown, USC. That uh, was a design, you know, wheel route. It was kind of a, it kind of creates a pick, you know, because the receiver runs a slant, and uh, if, if you're on single coverage with the linebacker, he has to run out there with you. And it was just a great call, you know, at the right time, you know, and it ended up working out for us, and I was wide open, and I uh, was able to help my team and, uh, score a big touchdown. With the score 21 13, quarterback Brian Randall tried to rally the Hokies, but Mike Patterson capped off a monster game with a forced fumble that the Trojans recovered. Ryan Colleen's field goal made the final score 24-13, and the Trojan locker room was in a mood to celebrate. What's up, LJ? How's it going, baby? I'm good. good. Looked like them Trojans showed up to play in the back room today. Hey. Something very special has happened for us since we've been together. We have found a way to finish better than anybody in the world, man, and you did it again tonight. I'm so proud of you. Let's go, baby. Hey, listen up now. If there was a doubt in your mind in the first half, I can understand that. It wasn't quite the way we thought it would go. It ain't always going to be easy. People are going to give us their best shot every day. They did, and they got their ass kicked in the fourth quarter just the way we always want to do it. Don't uh, Just make sure we hang all the way through because, you know, can you win in the first quarter? No! Can you win in the second quarter? No! Can you win in the third quarter? No! Can you win in that fourth quarter? No! We can no! 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 How about Reggie Bush? Three bad big Reggie Bush! No! A great opportunity now, fellas. Let's be classy as hell. We're going to take care of business. We ain't screwing this thing up. We just got started. This was a hell of a matchup. It was a really fired up football team with a bunch of good athletes, good coaches, the whole thing. Check this out. When we get back, we're preparing to play in the Coliseum. Yeah! yeah. 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 We go to the Coliseum. It'll be so much fun. They'll be falling out of the freaking rafters to come see our Trojans. It's going to be awesome. President Sample, you better be at that game next time we come out of Colorado State. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear a song we haven't heard for a long time, for real, since last time we won in the Rose Bowl, so let's hear it. we got two times to do it. Come on. Fire! For all the seed, I'm in the victory. Trojans came home to the Coliseum, and home is where the heart is. Just ask the record-setting number of fans that came through the gates in 2004. Make no doubt about it, the swagger is back. In fact, the Trojans played in front of more than a half a million of their own and shattered school and conference attendance records that dated back decades. The evening was highlighted by the unveiling the national championship banner. Get ready for the best shot in football! The coaches were just as excited as the players. That's right. I like it. I like it. It always will be. Forever has been about us. What's really good about that? What's really good about that, it's just what, the kind of guys that we have right in here, the guys we love, we love each other, we love the things that we do together, you love your coaches, we get to play for one another today, it will always be about us. Leave nothing out there, leave nothing out there. Let's have ourselves a hell of a day today. Bring them on, boys, let's go! go. go. Yeah. Trojans on three, one, two, three! Go down. Let's go. Len Dale White powered the Trojan offense with the first of three touchdown runs. White would finish the game with 123 yards on only 14 carries. Colorado State was driving early in the second quarter, but a senior leader on the Trojan defense made a big play. To the right side, and Holland throws intercepted. Picked off by Matt Gertigert going down the sidelines. And Matt running just as fast as he can travel, but they finally get him at the 33-yard line. Matt Grudegood's interception gave USC great field position. Matt Leiner immediately looked to throw it deep, and he found Chris McFoy at the one. 
still looking. Got a man in the corner over here. A little bit late getting him the ball, but he made the catch down at the one-yard line. Chris McCoy. From there, White pulled his way in for his second TD. The Trojan offense proved too much for the Rams' D. There's the pass completed, and it is Steve Smith down to the three-yard line. This goes to the running back. The tailback, Lindale White, the big guy, touchdown. That's three touchdowns for Lindale White tonight. The USC defense made another big play. This time, it was Jason Leach recovering a fumble. <laughs> Leinert led a 96-yard drive with Reggie Bush getting his turn at pay dirt. The Trojans went into the half up 28 to zero. Hey, this is a great opportunity for us. It's a great learning opportunity for us how to play this game right now. I want to make sure that it's really clear. They're going to come out on, with their offense. When they get their chance, they got to run the football. They can't just come out and throw it all the time. You have to send the message to them, defense, that you're there. You understand how to play football all down in distances. Don't give them a freaking breath of air on running the football. Then it'll turn into a throwing game later on. But make it happen that way. Offense, we're up first right now. This is time to finish a football game with attitude. The whole fourth quarter, the whole third quarter, everybody can. Everybody gets up. We stop it for nothing. You hear what I'm saying? We stop it for nothing. Let's go call this thing up. Let's go. We had Trojans on three. One, two, three. Trojans. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We get to play for 30 more minutes. The Trojans continue to dominate. Intercepted by Matt Grittigood, his second of the night. Liner hooked up with Smith for a 35-point advantage. Touchdown, Steve Smith. The Trojans intercepted two consecutive Ram passes. Justin Holland getting some heat, but gets it off. Intercepted. Dallas starts rock deep and intercepted it. Then Leinert gave a birthday present to 18-year-old freshman Dwayne Jarrett. Oh, um, this is a great experience, and you know, Matt. He's looking for me the whole way, and um, he just told me just to go up and get the ball, and you know that's what I did. You know I had a little bit of drops, like two, two drops in the first half, so you know I was a little bit down on myself about that. But um, he kept going to me, and you know, I finally got in the end zone, and you know it was just a great experience. You know um, I could have asked for a better birthday gift. Even the Trojan defense got a chance to put up some points. It's fumbled, it's picked up, it is touchdown, Manuel right to Southern California. I think uh, Swiger had a big hit on that play to, to get that thing started, but uh, yeah, that was a fun play. It's always fun to see the big guys rumble. Final score, USC 49, Colorado State zip. Nothing. The number one ranked Trojans had no doubters on this day. Number one ranked USC made its first trip ever to Provo, Utah, home of Brigham Young University. It was a homecoming of sorts for offensive coordinator Norm Chow, who spent 27 years as an assistant at BYU. After a scoreless first quarter, the Trojans briefly fell behind 3-0, but the team responded with 21 unanswered points. They draw it, middle screen, and there is Bush, scored against Virginia Tech on this, and he'll score against BYU tonight. Here's Bush right up the middle. Brings it to the outside. He's gone. 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, 66 yards. Reggie Bush. Go, come on, we ain't done yet. We got a lot of work for us. We're going to be up Pass for the end zone. Jarrett for the touchdown. Meanwhile, the defense was led by All-American Sean Cody, who recorded three sacks in the ball game. After halftime, the Trojans continued to pile up yardage. Reggie Bush enjoyed the first 100-yard rushing day of his USC career, and Len Dale White also went over the century mark. When me and Len Dale, like you said, we've, we've, uh, we've done a great job. We complement each other really well you know, in, in games, and uh, you know, it's hard for defenses to, to game plan, both of us. All right, baby, we're about to take it home. Then in the fourth quarter, senior running back Lee Webb Joined the scoring party with his first career touchdown. It was a great moment for, for, 
our younger guys and guys that look up to Lee and, and, and have uh, had so much fun with him as a friend and as a teammate uh, to see him get that opportunity and bang it home and he you know he, he smoked in that end zone pretty you know pretty well and uh, everybody had fun with it and got all jacked up about it so it was just a kind of an exchange of respect you know uh, in, in an obvious way for the younger guys to Lee and he, he's well deserving. Players and coaches were in a mood to celebrate the 42-10 road victory. Hey, first off, first off, let, let's never, let's never take, let's never take these victories so lightly that we don't have a blast with it, man. That's a beautiful night of football. We went out there, we seized the momentum of the night, and just took it over. That's a hell of a job. Shot Let's not minimize. These, these accomplishments are hard, man. They're hard to just keep getting these ones. We're just going to keep tacking them on. Tonight was a special night to come back to Utah, to come back to BYU, where the guy spent 27 years. I need a <laughs> USC traveled to the farm to take on Stanford in the 2004 Pac-10 opener. It's a difficult place to play. There's not a lot of energy in that stadium, you know, and, and it, it, it does challenge you, it challenge you some in that regard. It's just an unusual kind of an uh, environment. It, even some of the leaders, you know, we just felt like something wasn't right, you know, in, in, in the warm-ups when we were warming up uh, for the game. And it just felt like, you know, something wasn't right. Quick look at, oh my, intercepted Kevin Arbeck. He's got a convoy in the running room. To the 20, to the 10, gets down to the one yard line. SC grabbed early momentum. Liner looking, time, touchdown USC. With the score 10-0, Trojans fans may have been thinking about a blowout. But Stanford quickly regrouped behind quarterback Trent Edwards. While the USC offense sputtered, Stanford pulled out every trick in the book. We started really fast in that game, but they were they were up to the task, and we weren't we weren't stopping them. You know, they they did a nice job on offense, probably their best game of the year. Late in the second quarter, Troy was able to respond. One minute to play in the half. Smith in motion. Bush looking, looking, bounces to the outside. This is trouble. It's also a touchdown for the Trojans. But the Cardinal had time for another highlight play. Edwards can take a knee here in 15 seconds, and that'll end the half. He's going to turn and give the ball to Lemon, running with it all wrapped up. As the driver breaks through, up the middle, he may go! 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Do you believe it? How about that one? Unbelievable! It was one of the real turning points in the season, I think, for us emotionally as a football team, uh, because they scored right at the end of the half, they're out ahead of us. I, I clearly remember as we're approaching the locker room, the, the banter of the players, they, they, they were already on the subject that we weren't going to let this happen. Two more, two more time, baby, two more, two more time. Hey, we only talk about playing 60 minutes, right? Go back, right? Well, 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 we've been saying it for a long time. We know exactly how it works. It ain't the first quarter. It ain't the second quarter. It starts happening in the third and the fourth quarter. We take this sucker together. You all know that. But you got to do it by doing things right. That's what's most important that you remember. Ain't no made up. You can't make it up and then expect it to work for you. Let's go take it piece by piece by piece and put this thing right back in our control. After giving up 291 yards in the first half, the Trojan D surrendered only 36 yards and two first downs the rest of the ball game. 
Meanwhile, Matt Leinart looked to hook up with his favorite target. Oh, he jumps it off. Smith, running room, breaks a tackle. Still on his feet, inside the 20, down of the 12-yard line. Leinart called his own number, and the Trojans trailed 28 to 24 in the fourth quarter. USC still needed a big play from someone. Reggie Bush answered the call. Bush looks for the wall. He's got the wall. Breaks through. Still on his feet. Cuts to the 50. Still going. Still on the 50. Jumps over a tackle. Gets down to the 40-yard line. Well, that was a spectacular play. Gosh, that was an unbelievable play. The guys making a miss and spinning and running. And just determination. Reggie, Reggie really, uh, really showed some tremendous fight and spirit in that game. Three plays later, it was third and long, and Chris McFoy made his biggest play ever. Pass is caught inside the 30, first down, Chris McFoy. Then Dale White carried the load from that point. Again, touchdown, USC. The defense held off the Cardinal on their last drive, and USC escaped with a hard-fought victory. Incomplete, USC will take over. That was really a defining moment, I think, as a team. You know, it showed what kind of character we have to come back from, from a deficit, you know, two touchdowns, and to come back and beat a, a solid team um, away. It showed a, lot of what, showed a lot of character, showed what type of team we have, and that we could come back. And it really kind of was a, you know, a, a stepping stone for the rest of the season. When the 2004 schedule came out, there was one game that stood out to everybody. That was against the Cal Bears. And when it was all said and done, it was probably college football's game of the year. Over 90,000 football fans flooded the Coliseum to see number one USC take on number seven Cal. ESPN's College Game Day crew made their first ever visit to downtown Los Angeles. The Trojans were looking to avenge their only loss from the 2003 season. It was, it was hyped up to, it was almost to like a national championship game, you know, I mean, it was, you know, we lost to them last year, it was only lost last year, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it's become a rival, I, I would say, and there's a lot of talent on each team, so it was going to be a great game, and it was. On their opening possession, the Trojans were faced with a key fourth down. Fourth and ten. Got to put it up. Throw it down the middle, the receiver goes way up in the air. Six foot five, Dwayne Jarrett, the freshman from New Brunswick, New Jersey, and makes the catch for a first down. It was an in route, and you know, uh, Matt, I seen he was coming to me, he was looking at me the whole way, so you know, he threw it up high, and I just had to go up and just make a play, and as I made a play, you know, I got flipped in the air, but you know, I still held on to the ball to keep the drive alive, so you know, um, that definitely was a, uh, the start to a, you know, a great finish. Liner then connected with Lindell White to give SC the lead. <laughs> After Mike Patterson recovered a fumble, Matt Liner looked to go deep. Liner's passes away down the middle, completed to Steve Smith. And Smith inside the five-yard line. First and goal, USC. Ryan Colleen kicked a field goal for a 10 to nothing lead. Hunter Tom Malone had a big game, and his 62-yard kick resulted in another Cal turnover that USC turned into three more points. Then the teams traded field goals before Cal finally got in the end zone with a Rodgers TD pass. Rodgers finished the half a perfect 14 for 14, but most of those were underneath. We try to keep everything in front of us, you know, if we have to give up those, you know, those five-yard routes and stuff like that, we'll just rally up and make the tackle, you know, he, he was settling for those five-yard routes. Colleen kicked his third field goal of the half, and the Trojans went into the locker room up 16 to 10. We gotta be one, one voice the whole way through, hey, now listen up. This Listen team. up, this is second half time. This is our time to go to work. This is our time to just do right. No penalties, no They're just executing all the way through this half. Outlasting figures and wear them out. They're probably kind of liking what it looks like right now. They ain't seen us before. They ain't seen what we can do. Let's get this thing wrapped up and go. Ball's coming to us off. Let's go, baby. Get it started. Trojan on three. One, two, three. Trojan! In the second half, Leonard again 
hooked up with number two. Will line it. He's back to throw. As time passes away, as is completed to Steve Smith, and Smith is taken out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Unfortunately for the Trojans, Smith injured his leg on the play, and their leading receiver would miss five games. So Matt Leinert looked to his big freshman target. Jarrett's TD catch put SC up 23-10, but then Rodgers was able to lead Cal on another long scoring drive. Tailback Marshawn Lynch punched it in, then it was time for Reggie Bush. Looking up into the sun, that's a good kick. It's two yards deep in the end zone, blocked by Bush, finally picked up by Bush and coming up to the 10-15, out to the 20-25. Oh, here we go. All the way to the 16-yard line. But a rare Leinert mistake gave the ball back to Cal. Then Patterson made another All-American play. Rogers sack. Thank ball ball fumble. Came and the Trojans have come out of there with it. Mike Patterson, the first man to get him, and apparently knocked the ball out of there. Late in the fourth quarter, Cal was on the verge of a monumental upset with first and goal from the USC nine. What followed were four plays that became part of USC's storied football history. First and goal. The nine. California owns the ball. SC nine. Rogers back. Passes away into the end zone. It is incomplete. It was intended for Noah Smith, Justin Wyatt, defending. Chance to win the ball game for California right here. Rogers looking around and tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Emmanuel Wright. It's a fight for those last four plays I mean, on the nine yard line there. And you know, for the four plays, for you know, they've been driving all day. We were tired, and guys were, you know, winded. And you know, Coach Kerr called a timeout and just, you know, said, "Let's play ball for the last four plays. Just show them, you know, what we got." And uh, you know, Manny came up with a big sack. Two plays: Terrell Williams and J.J. Arrington are both in the backfield. Now that's Williams, the tailback, going outside. Rogers back, pressure coming, looking around, shopping, throws, in zone, no. Pass intended for Jeff MacArthur, defended by Eric Wright. Fourth down from the 14. Rogers throws, in zone, no. That's the stuff you dream about, stopping a team, goal line stand, playing your home crowd, win the game. That's the stuff you dream about. And it was awesome. I loved the way that thing finished. Yeah, I loved the challenge of it and the build-up. And, and the Coliseum was crazy and nuts and all that. And there was this, this bunch of guys just banded together to, to, to win a football game You know, at that moment. It was very, very special. That stand wrote another chapter in Trojan football lore. The final score was 23-17, and the Trojans were 5-0. For the second week in a row, the Trojans hosted an undefeated Pac-10 rival. Number 15 ranked Arizona State was led by record-setting quarterback Andrew Walter. The Arizona State game was a, a game that brought a challenge in itself. Um, I guess the media ch challenges you to, you know, can you come back after a big win and, and, and play well? And our guys just came out flying. This is not the devil's house. A sold-out coliseum watched the USC offense jump out to an early lead. Leonard drops the ball, man chasing him, he steps away, throws it now, and has a man uh, outside Alex Holmes. Alex makes the catch, goes on down the sidelines and makes it first and goal at the Arizona State nine yard line. And it's passed to the goal line, touchdown Bush. Walter got the Sun Devils in scoring position on their next series, but big Sean Cody kept them off the scoreboard. Later in the quarter, 
Leinert tossed his second touchdown. And Leinert looking to throw it close to White. White pounds to the goal line and into the end zone touchdown. Linebacker Matt Grudegood made his fourth interception of the year and returned it all the way to the Sun Devil 19. Leinert looked for his favorite red zone target. Leinert's pass to the corner, touchdown, Wayne Jarrett. We saw what he could do in fall camp against a great defense, and we knew it was just a matter of just gaining that confidence, and really since the Cal game, he just took off. Up 28-7 late in the half, the Trojan offensive machine didn't let up. Oh, coming around, Bush is going to throw it, he's got a man wide open, Jarrett. It's now a foot race to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown! Then the Sun Devils made a costly mistake. They punted to Reggie Bush. Makes the catch. That man's right in his face. He made the catch. Got away from another one. Got away from another one. Getting a little help now on the blocking. Look out. Look out. One man. Two men. Stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. You know, I've been saying I think he's the best player in college football. Most versatile. Does the most. Don't stop the highlight reel. And Leinert had time to throw his fourth TD pass. Leinert looking deep. Got his man. Touchdown. Wayne Jarrett. Jarrett tied a school record with his three touchdown catches. I knew what I could do. I just had to get comfortable and, you know, let the game come to me. Go out there and make plays. And, you know, that's what I've been doing ever since. USC led at the half 42-7. The most points by a Trojan team in a half since 1981. After halftime, the Trojan D continued to dominate. They got him split up. Oh, they're getting some heat. Down he goes way back inside the 25-yard line. Sean Cody. Walter was held to 181 yards passing and was picked off twice after entering the game with only one interception all year. Walter puts a lot of air under it and has it intercepted by Darrell Darnell Bain. When the final gun sounded, USC had a 45-7 victory and a firm hold on first place in the Pac-10. Traditional Pac-10 power Washington came to the Coliseum for USC's third straight home game. With an election right around the corner, Trojan fans did some creative campaigning. From the start, it was apparent that USC's defense was simply too much for the Huskies to handle. And we started out really well defensively, and really they didn't have a chance in that game to get going. And, and it was a great, great defensive uh, week in preparation for the option football that we we're going to see, and it, we took a lot of pride in it. But the Trojan offense was off to a slow start. Not until late in the second quarter did Matt Leinert get SC into the end zone. Quick drop, throw on the bay, looking for Bush. He's got it! Touchdown, USC! Up 10 at the half. The team was focused on putting up more points. Hey, 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 listen up. Listen up, listen up. I want to see I want to see you respond right now. I know you didn't like what happened in the first half. They ain't scored and they ain't got freaking close yet. We're going to make sure and keep that going for you. Offense, let's execute. Let's do what we know how to do. Frosty Rucker recovered a fumble on the Huskies' first play in the third quarter. Then the Trojans got behind Lendale White. Hand off, and it's Lendale White up the middle, off the right side, dances into the end zone. Touchdown! USC, Lendale White. The bruising sophomore tailback finished the game with two touchdowns and 93 yards rushing as USC logged almost 40 minutes of possession time. We just told everyone, like, pretty much, like, get ready. We're going out the second half and we're going to take it to them. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We know that we can't win in the first, second, or the third quarter. It's all about the fourth and how you finish the game. Midway through the third quarter, Liner hooked up with senior wideout Jason Mitchell. It was Mitchell's first career TD. All alone, Jason Mitchell makes the catch. Stays in bounds. Touchdown, Jason Mitchell. With reserves playing most of the fourth quarter, special team standout Desmond Reed scored his first career touchdown after a tightrope walk down the right sideline. What a run by Desmond Reed. Meanwhile, the Trojan defense never let up, holding Washington to 113 total yards and just six first downs. The 38 to nothing final was USC's first shutout over the Huskies since 1965. After three weeks of sunny skies at the Coliseum, USC traveled to Pullman, Washington 
where they were faced with a hungry opponent and also wet, stormy conditions that included some pregame hail. It's always kind of windy and cold up there, but then as, as luck would have it, you know, the clouds came in right, right before game time and, and knocked us with a bunch of uh, hail, you know, in, uh, in pregame warm-ups. And their fans thought that that was going to affect us in some way, and our guys went nuts. They were jumping up and down and going crazy. Got more excited about the fact that we were challenged by the weather and that it wasn't going to be an issue. Momentum immediately swung towards the Trojans on the opening kickoff. The ill-advised onside kick gave SC great field position, and five plays later, Reggie Bush capitalized. Here's Bush, takes it outside, got the corner, inside the 10, he's gone. Touchdown USC, just like that. After Desmond Reed recovered a fumble on the ensuing kickoff. It's a free ball! USC's got it! It took only two more plays for Lendell White to punch it in. At the Washington State War, Lendell White left side, touchdown Trojans. And we are only two and a half minutes into the ball game. It is 14 to nothing. Midway through the first quarter, Reggie Bush struck again. This time Reggie fields it at the 43. Wide side, got a block across midfield. Now reverses his field. Look out. He gets one more block. He's gone. Now Reggie Bush down the sideline. Forget about it. It's another Trojan touchdown. In the second quarter, Matt Leiner connected with Dwayne Jarrett. Leiner to throw, deep middle. Jarrett's got it inside the 15. And he'll score. Touchdown. The NSC's All-American defensive tackles teamed up to make a big play. Here comes a blitz again. He steps up and goes down. Mike Patterson. Sean Cody, I think, is the guy that made the hit. Patterson cleans up those two tackles that we've been talking about. White scored his second TD, and the score was 35 to nothing at the half. It's real important how we play the game. Do we have the strength to play the game? And where they're asked out just because we love playing football. We need a hell of a half. Everybody gets a chance to contribute, but it won't be worth it if we don't break. In the third quarter, Jarrett scored his second touchdown. Jarrett to the top of your screen. Leonard looks that way, throws to him, touchdown. Meanwhile, SC's defense held the Cougars to 165 total yards and 11 first downs and forced four turnovers. Here's a long ball. Intercepted. Washington State did manage to score, but the outcome was never in doubt as USC cruised to a 42-12 victory. Let's never forget, let's never forget about winning, fellas, and how sweet it is to come together, take our, take our crew on the road, and go put it together again. I'm telling you, scaring the piss out of anybody that's going to see us. We got to go on the road, one more big trip yep. next week. Let's make sure we knock that thing out. It ain't going to be a whole lot different in this setting. It's going to be very similar. We know how to do this really well. So let's make sure we take advantage of this and make it a hell of a finish to this road season, all right? We come back three games at home in L.A. after that. Let's make sure we get this done. It was a cold and foggy night in Corvallis as USC prepared to take on Oregon State. And the setting was so unique with the fog that was there. Very, very interesting night uh, to go out there. And when we do together, we do the Beaver Call. <laughs> Oregon State was fired up and took advantage of the Trojans' lack of experience playing in poor visibility. Two field goals and a Derek Anderson touchdown pass but Oregon stayed up 13 to nothing in the second quarter. Obviously with the fog, man, that was the first time we ever played in, in that type of atmosphere, you know, with the fog and hardly being able to see, and it affected us a little bit, but, uh, you know, um, we adjusted to it. Here's a reverse to push. He's got the whole field, 40, 45, midfield to the 45, still at his feet at the 40, 35, cuts inside at the 25, to the 20, and that'll take care of a lot of frustration right there. Matt Leinert went gunning for the end zone. Leinert straight back, throws to the end zone. What a grab by Dominique Byrd. A great grab. He was covered as well as you could cover a man. What a shot in the arm for this USC Trojan offense. Finally getting on the board, putting together some semblance of a drive. Down 13 to seven at the half, the Trojans were feeling confident. Ain't never been a game one in the first half. It ain't happening like that, you all know that. What's going to happen here is what we do right now from this point on. We got about two minutes before we get out of here. I want this house juiced up when we get out of here. When we open those doors, we're going to work and go get ourselves a win. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
Lofa Tatupu's interception gave SC early momentum in the third. Then Leinert once more looked to his big tight end. Burn just wide open, took it down on the streak and scores. Number 86 is too dangerous to be left that open. Anderson led the Beavers into SC territory and was looking for the go-ahead score. Play fake this time. Anderson narrowed it out, going for it all for Haas. Can't hang on, it's intercepted. Picked off in the end zone by Leach. The score was still 14 to 13 when OSU punted early in the fourth quarter. Bush takes the big hop. Boyd's the first man. Now look out. If he gets back here, he's gone. Midfield, one man to beat. And he's going to beat him easily, and this is going to be a USC touchdown. Kick it away from Reggie Bush all day, but the one time you don't, he'll beat you. Later in the fourth, Lindale White pounded it in as part of his 100-yard night. OSU scored a late touchdown, but the Trojans recovered the onside kick and went on to celebrate a 28-20 win on an eerie, crazy night in Oregon. This was a hell of a night. It wasn't easy at all. It was, it was exactly what the Trojans can, can answer to. We needed to get back together. We needed to come to that locker room. That's a great second half finish, all the way through the whole thing. That was both sides of the ball. He just took the game over. Hell, they couldn't do nothing about it. It was a great finish. One more time! Oh. 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 I want to recognize two guys, too. I want to recognize the two coaches that just will not freaking let it up. You can't get many more from a guy that you can get from T. Davis. How about the way he can get it? The Trojans return to the Coliseum for a homecoming matchup with Arizona and their new head coach, Mike Stoop. You have a chance to play against a, a, a new program, a new coach, and all. You always want to send send a message to them that uh, the first time they play, that you can play them tough, and they can expect us to always be there. Uh, and, and we wanted to leave a message with them that might carry over. After a sluggish start, the Trojans scored on the first play of the second quarter. Leiner looking to the end zone, throws, touchdown. Catch is made by David Kirpin. Later in the half, Desmond Reed did his best impersonation of Matt Leiner. Here's the reverse, Desmond Reed, he's going to throw, he's got Jarrett at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and out of bounds at about the three-yard line. One play later, Lindale White did his thing for a 14-3 Trojan lead. Hey, check this out, fellas. When we come back in this locker room, we're coming back in this locker room with the champion. You know what I'm talking about? He's coming in here as champion. It's showtime, baby. <laughs> After halftime, the Trojans march downfield on an 11 play drive. And this is White, and White skips in the end zone, touchdown Trojans. Number 21 powered his way to his fourth 100 yard game of the year, including this 54 yard rumble that set up another TD. The 35 spins off a tackle at the 25 and the 20, and finally down at the 18 yard line. Lindale White taking it on a zone play, winding it back behind Sam Baker, taking it to the end zone and handing it to the ref. Look at Pete Carroll. Dwayne Jarrett set a career high with 144 yards receiving, including two more touchdown grabs. Liner going to throw again. Throws for Jarrett. Touchdown. Blitz comes. Straight back liner. Looking to the end zone. Got Jarrett. Touchdown Trojans. The defense was led by Lofa Tatupu's 11 tackles. Justin Wyatt had an interception off a of Dallas Sarts deflection. And defensive end Lawrence Jackson made a pick in the fourth quarter to thwart a Wildcat drive. Picked off by Jackson for the 35 and finally down. Tailback Herschel Dennis scored his first touchdown of the year and USC enjoyed a 49-9 win. The victory clinched the Pac-10 title 
and a berth in the Rose Bowl, but the Trojans and their fans had loftier ambitions. I'm Dave Davis, president of the Tournament of Roses and the Rose Bowl. This is uh, Bill Johnstone, who's chairman of the Rose Bowl Management Committee. Congratulations on the uh, Pac-10. We'd love to have you in the Rose Bowl. However, as an SC uh, fan, I'd just soon see you in Miami. With a bye week on the schedule, the Trojans had time to rest some injuries and also have some fun. I had uh, tried to find Snoop earlier in the year to see if, if he'd be interested in, in coming out and seeing us, and, and it wound up he had this TV show that it, it would fit the format just right. The one I'm going to fight on. <laughs> one, two, three. Thanks so much for all the time. Oh, hey, you got your checks on, huh? Yeah, I'm going to put my cleats on. You know, I'm going to put them on when I go out there. I want to run a ride. I want Matt to throw me a pass, man. Yeah, I'll get you. I got to get one, man. On November 27th, a capacity crowd packed the Coliseum to see number one USC take on Notre Dame in the 76th meeting of the classic rivals. It would be the last game in the Coliseum for the Trojan seniors. The Notre Dame game is a great event at, at the Coliseum you know, when, when the schedule swings this way. Uh, having to buy to get ready for it and all that just made it even more fun and uh, with, the, with the heightened tension of trying to finish the season off undefeated, you know, all of that. I uh, just added to it, Notre Dame came out ready to go and they, they were ready to, to give us the best shot and started really fast. Quinn looking to throw, has a man wide open, touchdown! Notre Dame jumped out to an early 10-3 lead by scoring on its first two possessions. Irish fans were hopeful for an upset, but Matt Leinert would put an end to those hopes. Pass is touchdown! Well, that's what SC's been doing to opponents all year long. Leinert and Jarrett had time for one more big play before halftime. Leinert looking to throw again. Goes to the outside with it. Pass caught by Blaine Jarrett. Gets loose on the sidelines and he's in there. Touchdown. No flash. Steve Smith threw a huge block to clear the way for Blaine Jarrett. And the Trojans have taken the lead on a 57-yard pass run play. And we just battle, you know, and... And whether it's through the air, through the ground, or on defense, we find a way to, to do the right thing. Hey, listen, hey, listen up! Listen up! It's our last chance this season to paint our house! Make sure these fuckers leave here to know this is our house, and it's how we're gonna play! Let's go, baby! Make them look like they're envy us! <laughs> After the half, the Trojans kept pouring it on. And they throw the bush. Look out. Look out. Here comes the pursuit. Irish defender missed him and Bush is in the end zone. Touchdown. Burrell missed him. Ellick couldn't run him down. Norm Chow up low. 69 yards. Steve Smith enjoyed his first game back after a broken leg sidelined him for five games. Liner kept it, has a man wide open. Steve Smith, touchdown. Well, welcome back, Steve Smith. And the Trojans junior quarterback needed just one more TD pass to tie a school record. Puts it in the end zone That's a touchdown. Matt Liner had a great game. You know, he just he answered the, the call to, to come through for his last shot to call him for the season and, and uh, it happens to be that it's prior to the Heisman voting and all the rest in, in similar fashion as Carson did a couple of years back. You know, Matt came through with a huge game. The guys made the plays for him everywhere and made some catches and protections were great and, and uh, put together a fantastic game that I think uh, clearly you know, gave him a better opportunity to win the Heisman. 400 yards passing for Matt Liner. The defense shut out the Irish in the second half. Win back. Runs right into the Trojan, Lawrence Jackson, who was hand fighting with the blocker. As Chick Hearn, the late Chick Hearn used to say at the Laker broadcast when it seemingly was decided that it's in the refrigerator.
SC celebrated a 41-10 victory, their third consecutive 31-point win over Notre Dame. years ago we came here and got this thing going these seniors were here and they were here when, when things started to turn around and they've been a huge part they have been guys that have believed in what we've been doing they've kept pulling at it all the way up pulling you guys through this thing they've done a fantastic job Shit, taking us years. to this point no, we haven't lost the game this cost him for a long freaking time yeah. 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 Yeah, it, just, it feels great man after all this we've been through together in season off season all the hard work man when people ask me, am I, how am I doing? I can only say one thing. I can't complain. Feel good to be number one. You guys are my family, and uh, it's been a blessing just to be here. And thank you all for contributing to a wonderful five years. You know, and it's it's special, boys. We we we're holding on to this thing, and we've got one more game to go, and let's go get this we thing. Get yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make sure we understand now. Our work ain't done. It ain't yeah. done. We get to go play in the freaking Rose Bowl next week, boys. Yeah. And we yeah. own that Rose Bowl. Oh, yeah. We own yeah. that Rose Bowl. Oh, Everybody that's going to participate in this game, we're all bringing it. This is a hell of an opportunity. It's playing cross town, all that stuff. We're going to do our week like we always do. But it's any time you get to play in the Rose Bowl, it's special as hell. Let's go to the Rose Bowl, fellas. Win that game. And let's go to the Orange Bowl, too. You want to do it? Yeah. The Trojans returned to the Rose Bowl for the Crosstown Showdown with UCLA. The team knew they were one win away from a berth in the Orange Bowl in the BCS title game. Greatest on the ass one time, who's going to answer? The time is now! We're the guys that own the city of Los Angeles! We own these motherfuckers' ass! you got to let them know! It's only a matter of time! Reggie Bush got SC off to a fast start. Liner gives the ball to Bush. He bounces in there for Fenway, and he's got a first down. He breaks loose. It's a foot race down the sideline. Bush is down to the five and scores as he somersaults into the hit zone. I remember um, cutting back, and, and uh, you know, at first I wasn't sure if it was going to be just a first down and a, a big game for us, and then it slowly but surely, you know, turned into a long run, and then I got some great blocks. Uh, I mean, key block from Dwayne Jarrett, who, uh, <laughs> who cracked back on the, one of the DBs. Kind of added a little flip in the end zone towards the end, and just uh, make it a little bit more special, I guess. Up 10-7 in the second quarter, the Trojans once again gave it to number five. This is uh, Reggie Bush, and Bush is gone. Forget it. No flags. Touchdown. 81 yards. And so I think he's the best player in college football. Most versatile, does the most. I feel like I have the ability to slow the game down and, and just try to bring it uh, you know, to, to my level to where you know, I almost can see it. It's almost like I can see everything on the field. Reggie just exploded with a huge, huge win uh, run early in the game. He also had another great run later on. Just fantastic effort from Reggie. And just tons of yards he made and really lit the stadium up, you know, and, and uh, got us going. Ryan Colleen kicked his second field goal just before the half to put SC up 20 to 10 at the break. Let's go, all right, let's go. We got something to prove, baby. We got two more quarters to prove it, baby. Come on. 
Let's separate, baby. Separate online. Come on. All right, listen up. Listen up. First question. Since the day we got on this in this program, did we ever say you could win a game in the first half? No. All right, so we all understand that real clearly. From this point on, I know you're feeling it. It feels good to have this, this game going the way it's going right now. Just get back out oh. there, play 30 more minutes. But here's the key. Let's go, baby. Champion. Let's go, baby. I want you to I want you to execute in this half just like we always do. That fourth quarter is just around the corner. Can you wait till we get to the fourth quarter? We're gonna make sure now, all the way through it, in all phases, everybody's executing, playing smart. Turn it up, baby, turn it up! And when it gets to this point, we want to do things just exactly like we do them. Let's go, baby! 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 In the second half, the Trojan senior kicker continued his perfect game. And Deleen puts it up and through the upright. Well, the lean on field goals today is 37, 42, and 34. The real stalwart get in performance in the game you know, came from a kicker. You know, Ryan Clean had a terrific football game. You know, he really finished strong in the season after having some, some uh, normal kicker type of issues in, in the middle of the year. Came back in the big games, just kicked like crazy. Finished on a great streak. This is his fifth if he can make it. And he did. Number 16 scored 17 on a school record five field goals to go along with two PATs. The Trojans held off a spirited Bruins comeback late in the fourth quarter. Matt Castle recovered an onside kick. It is caught by a Trojan. Caught by Matt Castle, the backup quarterback. And Jason Leach's interception in the final seconds sealed the deal for the trip to Miami. Final score, Trojans 29, Bruins 24. It was SC's sixth consecutive win over their crosstown rivals. First off, to hang together all the way through all of this time with all the hype and the, pie and the pump and all that stuff and just to stay on focus and stay on course, fellas, is a great accomplishment. And it's a great lesson for us for whatever we're doing in the, in the future here. We've got to hang together no matter what the, what the situation is. If we stay strong, we stay tight, hey, nothing ever going to get between us, fellas. And it's a great illustration of it. And we didn't just do it for a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months. But we've been doing it for a whole freaking year or two years or whatever. <laughs> We loved you when you were down there two years ago, and we're glad you're coming back. So here it is. And now, without further delay, the Heisman Trust is proud to announce the winner of the 2004 Heisman Memorial Trophy. And the winner is Matt Leinhardt from the University of Southern California. It was nerve wracking. When I got to New York, you know, you were sitting there, you want to win the trophy, but you know, I didn't care. But when you're there, you want to win. You're the one of the five guys left, you want to take that home. But when, when I won, it was just a sigh of just, it was just very disbelief, and I was kind of in shock. You don't think about it every day when it, you know, being up for the Heisman Trophy and winning it. Two thousand five started with a BCS dream matchup: number one versus number two. It was USC taking on an undefeated Oklahoma, and Miami treated both teams like royalty. At the hotel, players were serenaded by the Trojan band and surrounded by the Trojan faithful. For all the seniors, present us off on a bang. Let us go, let it all out, play for one another, stay together, and we'll take this home and we'll, we'll run away with it, baby. Right now, we're heading to the beach party. The orange is over there. Big party, everyone's gonna be there. You should be there too. I'm gonna go swimming though. All fun aside, the team made final preparations to take on the Sooners. Nothing got in their way. My biggest concern was how we would match up athletically. I thought maybe they were so good that they were just better than us athletically and that might make a difference in the game. 
But as we got closer to the game, uh, the, the preparation stayed, you know, in kind of in line like we always hoped it would, and, and, and we were focused. We had great, great work. The guys were just attentive and, and, and energetic and, and responsive throughout the process. Even when we were here, when we went through the week before Christmas, the week after Christmas, you know, down there in Miami, was, it just was beautifully done, you know. And, and so there was no reason by the time we got to the game to think we wouldn't play well. <laughs> It's all over, it's all nice now. This is what's gonna be. We're gonna be here together. We're gonna to break it down one time just the way we always do, fellas. Together as one as we started. Remember on that practice field, the whole long time ago? But we're still in that practice field. Let's finish it with a freaking uh whatever what's the name of this field we're playing that oh, player. Oh, 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 tuned in for the most highly anticipated BCS title game ever. Our coach had us prepared to the fullest at that time. We had climax at the right time of the, of the week, you know, to be prepared to play at our best performance. The wait is over. Now check this out. I asked you for one thing. All I want you to do is bring your heart. Did we get our heart right? We got our heart right and ready to go. All night long, fellas, let's play with one heartbeat, play together all night, have a great time. Come on. Let's go. The Trojan offense looked sharp on its very first play, but the drive stalled, and Oklahoma promptly went on a 92-yard march. Play action for White, throws in the end zone, and it is caught. A touchdown, Oklahoma, Travis Wilson, his 10th touchdown catch of the year, and the Sooners take the lead in the national championship game. Matt Leinert responded by leading the Trojans into Oklahoma territory. Leinert drops the pass, being chased, rolls left, rushed from behind, throws over the middle. It is caught beautifully out at the 50. Steve Smith hangs on to the ball. First third down, Leinert is looking for me. And he uh, basically slings it in there, and I just, you know, go make the tough grab going across the middle. I think that kind of propelled us for the whole game, really, just to grab the momentum. And in a season of highlight plays, Dominique Bird soared into Trojan lore. Rolling away from the pressure as Liner throws, looking for Dominique Bird in the end zone. He makes a one-handed catch. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC! What a catch by Dominique Bird! You see the catch that Dominique made, you know, you know that... That was a great play. It was a great play. Uh, it was what, what you, you know, you see, the guy's got to make plays. He did. You know, Matt threw a ball that was behind him. Uh, the design of the play was great, but he was really late getting the ball out, so we had to move to do it. And then he makes a great, great play to make a catch like that in the circumstances. What started was a blitz of points, reminiscent of the 1974 USC Notre Dame game. January 4th, 2005, became a date for the ages. The kick is away, and it's off the side of. Malone's foot, bounces, takes a Trojan hop down inside the five, rolls to the four, and picked up there. Go, go, the Trojans are going to get the ball, I think, inside the 10-yard line. I believe it's SC Ball, and it is! Oklahoma with a serious mistake. Hand off to White. He runs into the line at the five. He's down towards the one. He's down towards the goal line. He is in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. The Trojans take the lead. We broke off their turnovers, which... You know, that was the story of the game. Whoever's going to turn the ball over was, was not going to win. You know, that's how it is really in any game. The Trojan defensive line was getting to the Sooners' Jason White, forcing him into poor throws. Looking downfield down the middle, got Brandon Jones, just lobs one up to nobody in particular, and it is intercepted at the 11-yard line. A horrible decision by Jason White, and the Trojans pick it off, and it's Jason Leach with another interception for USC and turnover number two for Oklahoma. What was White thinking? Liner then went to work on the Sooner secondary. Liner throws a little fade. Jarrett up in the air, makes the catch, comes down with the football. Yes, sir. We hit him on a, a little fade route, you know, and, and used him a little bit there, and then, and then uh, went right back after him again to see if we could just get it. Play action for Liner, looking long downfield for Jarrett again. He's wide open, makes the catch at the 10. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USA. The corner, he, he went up on a blitz, and, you know, I ran right past the safety. And, you know, Matt read that, and, you know, he was doing it up where I get it, and you know, I just made the play. Up 21 to 7, the Trojan D didn't let up. White takes in the shotgun on third and 14, being rushed. Throws as he's hit, hits intercepted, taken by the Trojans, Eric Red at the 25. He's down inside the 20 to the 15, and tackled at the 10 yard line. 
It took Leinart only three plays to put SC up by three touchdowns. Bush comes in short motion this way. Throw over the middle. Smith makes the catch in the end zone. A great catch on a reverse pass. It was behind him a little bit. Well, when Stevie made his play, it was just no doubt. It was just, this was going to be the night. You know, and things were going to happen and we were rolling. And, and uh, great players make great plays. And that's, that's how it usually works. And, and uh, it was really exciting to see them come through for the opportunity. Later in the quarter, Leinert looked for Smith again. Bush comes in motion to this press box side. Leinert drops to pass. Waiting. Has time. Oh, throwing for Smith in the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, USC! Just trying to run my routes, you know, as hard and as uh, deep as deep as I could, you know, just do it all the little things right. They were going to, you know, take us to that victory. The Trojans tacked on a last-minute field goal to make the halftime score 38-10. to USC was only 30 minutes of football away from making history. Second half, the Trojans kept rolling. Bush goes in motion. Three receivers left, throw over the middle. Steve Smith, same play, same result. Touchdown USC. National Championship USC. Leinert's fifth touchdown pass set an Orange Bowl record. Really, it was just a matter of us making plays. Steve Smith made some great catches. Dominic Bird made a fantastic catch the first touchdown. And, and the offensive line gave me all day to throw, and we ran the ball well. It was just, it was just one of those things we were just on fire. Meanwhile, the Trojan defense had shut down the powerful Sooner offense, limiting Jason White's effectiveness and holding freshman sensation Adrian Peterson in check. Once I think, you know, Coach Carroll, you know, found out what they were trying to do and, and, and really, you know, establish our defense, you know, we knew in the end that, you know, it was going to come down to Peterson winning the ball, and that's, you know, we wanted to stop, you know. We knew Jason White could hurt us, but Peterson could hurt, him, hurt us much more. Our top priority, especially at the back end, was to keep everybody in front of you. Don't let them beat us deep. Make them try to inch their way down the field and see if they have enough patience to do it. And basically, <laughs> it worked out pretty well. Bush was kept out of the end zone for only the third time all season. But the All-American performer did contribute 149 all-purpose yards. One of the things I remember with Coach Carroll, I remember saying, you know, that uh, you know, if we just stay within our system and do the things that I've gotten this this far, you know, there'll just be another team in a white jersey. And uh, I, that stuck in my mind throughout the whole game. Tailback Lendell White had been limited in practice due to a severe ankle injury, but he returned with a vengeance. First time I got the carry, and I felt, I felt how physically stronger that my whole team was compared to those guys. And I knew what kind of the impact we were going to have. The one game was going to be a for us that day. And our offensive line was like, they felt like they were the strike. They kept coming to the head and they were telling me, man, we, we can do whatever we want to these guys. You know I mean? And once I heard that from them guys, and it gave me all the, all the confidence in the world that I needed. And it felt like every time I got the ball, the hole was, it was a gaping hole for me to just run through. White finished the game with 118 yards rushing and two touchdowns. By the fourth quarter, the game's outcome was not in doubt, and the Trojans started to celebrate. Final seconds ticked off the clock and USC's 55-19 victory put the finishing touches to a magical season. The Trojans' 13-0 record was the best in school history. The team that started the season number one in the nation ended up right on top and the Trojans were national champions for the second consecutive year. Way to go. Ah! 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 
so many people who played well tonight. Fellas, we played well on offense, on defense, on special teams. We did it all tonight, fellas. You guys right. talking about the best game they've ever seen a team play. Yeah. Well, you know what, well, you know what it really was? It's just us playing football. Yeah. It's the way we do our stuff. It ain't nothing, It's the way we do it. This will be a great night for us. Everybody take care of it. We got a little song to sing. It's all yeah. Woo! We're getting the shower up. There's no piss and sad over there. Let them hear us sing. Boy, what a dominating performance over Oklahoma in the national championship game. And I must tell you, as an alumni, it gives me a great sense of pride and satisfaction to know the USC Trojans are back on top. The national championship trophy is back where it belongs in Heritage Hall. And this time, folks, there is no doubt. After the season, three prominent players had a tough decision to make. Stay at USC for their senior season or enter the NFL draft. Linebacker Lofa Tatupu decided to go into the NFL. Then it was time for punter Tom Malone and quarterback Matt Leinert to make their announcements. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to be in a position right now where either way, I'm gonna have a degree from such a great university and, and to be in this situation. Um, I really went back and forth on it. You know, it's been a dream, I think, as everybody to, to go play on Sundays and, and be able to do that and, and to be drafted and, and just to be able to support myself and help my family out. But after thinking about it, you know, I'm, I'm excited to come back for another year at SC. Um, it just... It, um, first, I just want to thank everybody coming out here and uh, you know, supporting me through all this and thank you for being patient with my decision. It's been a very difficult one. Um, first, I want to thank you know, my dad and my, all my family and, and uh, coach and everyone who's helped me through this process you know, to, to making this decision today. Um, I think the most important thing I've learned about this week is that you know, to do you know, what's best for myself and my family and to gather information and take it in, but ultimately, you know, do what, what makes me, do what's going to make me happy. Um, and furthermore, I've uh, announced I will be coming back for my fifth year. <laughs> This was uh, definitely the toughest decision of my life. Um, I realized the opportunity right now to support my family by going to the NFL early, but to me, I think college football and, and this whole atmosphere here and being with my friends and my teammates that you know, I've been with for four years is ultimately more satisfying and will make me happier than any amount of money could uh, make someone happy. So. Um, I just I feel very confident. I'm very excited about the opportunity to come back and, and play another year here and um, be in college one more year. It's, a, it's the best time of my life, and I've had the most fun being at SC my last four years than I ever had. So, um, so I plan on being back here next year and uh, hopefully to just be a leader again and hopefully win again. Thank you. Now the only question is, can the Trojans make it a three-peat? three titles in a row.